Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby with Fitness is Medicine, and today I'm gonna to talk about improving core strength. So I had a suggestion from a longtime follower that we need to work on some core. If you're thinking about um, fall cleanup coming into the winter, you may be outside cutting down a lot of things and carrying things and carrying heavy bags. And this is the type of thing that can really cause low back pain if you're not careful if you don't already have that core strength, or if you're not implementing the correct techniques when you're doing all of these things. So, um, if you don't have low back pain, it's still good to work on these things so that you can continue to improve that core strength and avoid having low back pain. But low back pain is, a, is probably one of the most common things that I see and that I hear when someone comes into my gym. So, we're gonna start with a little hip circles on the ball. And this is good to do if you are having back pain or if you're just feeling really tight from you know a long day working um, many times injury occurs when when we're getting tired and start not thinking about what we're doing or when we're lifting something far away from our body so when we're lifting a weight here then the back takes it so we're going to work on a little bit of that to work on that strength and to start we're just going to work on these hip circles so you can start by going side to side if you don't have a ball you could try this um, sitting on you know a couple pillows maybe on your sofa but a ball works the best for this so if you don't have a ball um, just kind of wait for the second exercise most of most of you do i know um, that i've heard from you do have a ball sitting around at home. So we're just going side to side now. And if you find a spot that might feel tight, just kind of lean into it. Gonna get warmed up here. Also walking is really good for back pain. So if you are having a little back tightness, going for a walk can really help um, loosen that up and just make it feel better. So walking is a really good thing to do for back pain. Okay, now let's move into some hip circles. So we're going to move all the way around in a circle. Try to think about rotating here, right? It's your pelvis, so that we're not doing your whole body like this. We're just, notice that my shoulders are really staying in the same spot, and I'm just moving my hips around in a circle. So if that's really difficult for you, um, maybe you need to work on this for some mobility in those hips and in that sacrum and in your low back. All of that area needs to be able to move. All right, now we're going to switch and go the other way. If this is something you're really struggling with right now, mark it down and you can sit and try and work on this while you're watching, you know, TV, while you're watching a movie or football or whatever you might have on. Um, just kind of working on that hip and back mobility. All right, after you've gone around in a circle a few times each way, now we're going to move into marches. So stay on that ball. You want to have your back uh, nice and tall, shoulders down, and you can use the sides of the ball here for some um, stability if you need to for balance, or sit next to uh, a stable chair or a coffee table or something, and do some slow marches. So if you notice, you want if you stay nice and tall, you're engaging your core to lift those legs. So this is a little bit of balance and core. So you're engaging your core to lift those legs. Don't fall into this trap where you tuck and lift your legs. So if you're having trouble with this, this is something you should work on. Keeping those hips directly below your shoulders. If you're losing your balance at all, it's okay to stand next to something stable. So um, many times in the gym, I'll have people do this next to the bar or next to my low mat, somewhere stable so that you can hang on and really work on what needs to be worked on without having to worry about falling off the ball. And also hanging onto the ball also helps. You have a little bit of stability there. So we're gonna do about 10 on each leg or so. And you can, you can decide like, okay, am I, you could sit in front of a mirror or even a, you know, a glass, if you have a big sliding glass door or something, you can see a reflection. Make sure that you're sitting up nice and tall. Or if you have a partner there, make sure that you're sitting up nice and tall and you're not falling into this tucking trap in order to lift your legs. Okay. The next one we're going to do is a pal-off press. So I'm going to move my camera over here to my bands. I need to raise that up a little bit. And this works on 
that notion that I was saying before where your arms are far away from your center of gravity and we're working on some um, obliques here. So your, your side abdominal muscles are called your obliques. You can, they come around here to stabilize from the back to the front. Now I want you to put this right out in front of you like this and I'm gonna show you straight on to begin with. All I want you to do is have it out to the side bring it to the front so there's a little tension on it and then move it about an inch so you're just barely moving it and you're keeping your core tight so you should if you're doing this correctly feel it over here in your side abdominals your obliques so i'm really barely moving it whatsoever i'm bringing it out so there's just a little resistance just little tiny pulses. Like when I have my clients do this in the gym, I'll put my hands on either side of theirs and really limit that range of motion. The more you do like this, you get other muscles involved. You get your hips working and you get your shoulders working, you get all this stuff. All I'm trying to do is target these obliques. So straight out in front, tiny, tiny pulses. You're trying to keep everything stable, just moving those arms a little bit. If you do have low back pain with this, take a little resistance off and you can also bring your arms in, bend those elbows so that we're shortening that lever. It's not a very big movement and if you may need to practice it a little bit to kind of get it right, but like I said, the smaller the movement you make, the harder it is. Okay, now we're gonna turn and do the other side. So I'm gonna try to make sure I'm on here. So. Bring your arms out straight, put a little bit of resistance on there. I have a pretty light resistance band here too, for those of you at home that are using your bands, a light resistance band. So arms straight out, tiny, tiny pulses. If you're watching, you might not really even be able to see that I'm moving very much. But the tinier my pulses are, the more I feel it in these obliques, they kind of come around here. And the more I feel it there, the smaller they are. Like I said, if I'm here, I'm not feeling it as much. So you can do, you know, you can time yourself and do 30 seconds of these or a minute, depending on how you're feeling with them. Or you could try 10 small, tiny pulses. It, you know, it kind of depends on how you're feeling with it and how, how much you're feeling and if you're having any low back. Remember, if you have any low back, straighten those or bend those elbows just a little bit and keep it closer. But remember, tiny pulses is the key there. Okay, next we're gonna do some diagonal chops with a ball. If you don't have a ball, you can use a water bottle or um, you know, like a, a small weight. This is just a two pound ball. I have heavier balls. It's up to you, you can, you can make this work for you, but I'm working on keeping your back strong, your core strong without causing pain. So I'm gonna take this ball and I want you to reach up to the side like this, and then we're gonna bring it down here like that. But we're gonna chop it, like we're, like we're gonna throw it, but don't release. So you're gonna push up and then push down quickly. So this might actually be easier with a little heavier weight. I have a um, device in my gym, it's called the Camp Gum. It's got handles on it, it's got water in it. And I like to use that in my gym because it sloshes and you can really tell that you're chopping and making that jab as you go up and down. So we're gonna go both directions, getting a little twist in that torso. And the other thing that I do sometimes, I have a water jug here that I use. I'll use it for the other direction. This works really well too, I like to use when you use that wire, you can feel the chop. So up, down. So we're switching directions this time. Use what you have at home. It doesn't require any fancy equipment. I like using stuff at home. It makes it more of a challenge. So a water jug or you know, a big water bottle or even just a basketball would work fine for this. Give it a good jab each time. All right, good. Okay, diagonal chops. 
Next, we're going to lower to the floor and do some more specific abdominal work. So, make sure you can see me here. We're going to do bicycle abs, which is what I call them. So, first, start on your back. With your knees bent, your feet flat on the floor. I like to start in this position because this is a really good restorative position for your back, if, especially if you are experiencing any back pain. So many times if somebody comes in to my gym with back pain, I'll tell them to lie down like this and think about pressing your back flat into the floor. So that puts your back in a really safe restorative position. So pressing your back into the floor and then release. But holding that position really helps if you're having any spasm down there in your low back, it will help release that a little bit. The other thing you can do is put your feet up on a chair or on a, um, a hassock or a footstool or something and then just lay there like this. And that just lets everything calm down. Okay, so if you're calmed down and your back isn't um, flared up right now, I wanna try these bicycle abdominals. So what you're gonna do is put one leg out straight, focusing on keeping that back flat to the floor, and then we're gonna switch your legs. So one's bent, one's straight, keeping your back happy. If you're able to do this without back pain, Lift up that straight leg. Don't quite set it down. So you're still getting that assistance from that foot that's here, but now we're starting to engage your core a little bit more by not setting that straight leg down. If that's okay and your back's still happy, try switching your feet, but don't set either one of them down. So focus on keeping that back flat to the floor. If you start to feel your back come up, stop, reset, flatten that back, and then go again. So the goal is to do about 10 on each side here, regardless of you know, which way you've done it, by if you're putting them both on the floor, if you're putting one on the floor, if you're lifting both of them off, Try to find the happy medium where you're getting a challenge, you're feeling it right here in your core, and you're able to keep that back flat to protect that back. Okay, good. Now we're gonna flip over and do a plank. I rarely prescribe straight sit-ups. I hardly ever tell people to do sit-ups. It can be hard on your neck and your shoulders and your back and lots of things. And there's a lot of, lot of ways to work on your core without doing sit-ups. So we're gonna do a plank next. So you can do this on an elevated surface such as a coffee table or a bench. You can even start on a countertop holding it if that's where you're at. A set of stairs actually works really well. You can kind of lean into the, you know, sixth or seventh stair, fourth or fifth. I don't know, I'd have to go do it right now to see but that's a good way because you have that support underneath you the entire way with that staircase. I'm gonna show you on the floor. So the easiest way to start is to turn over, put your elbows underneath your shoulders and you can come up on your knees. And if that feels okay, come up on your toes. The other thing you can do is if if you come up on your toes like this and you're holding it and you can only go five seconds or so, you can try one knee down. You can alternate knees if you want to try to make this doable. And then the more you do these, see if you can do them a little bit less with the assistance of your knee. So up. The goal is to hold this for about 30 seconds. Now, if you want a straight line from your shoulders, actually from the top of your head through the bottom of your heels. So don't dip your head like this. Don't bring your hips up like this. And similarly, don't bring your hips down like that because that puts your, your back into an arched position. 
So after you've held it for 30 seconds in one of those domains, you can sit back like this in child's pose and give it a good stretch. You're giving the back a good stretch here. This is a really restorative position. And then you can also reach out to one side. Hold that for as long as you need. You can reach out to the other side. It's a really restorative position if you've been doing lots of yard work or um, if you just have some back pain in general. Okay, one more to go. Straighten up my camera here. And we're going to do um, a balance exercise, adding just a little bit of weight. So I'm gonna take this ball, like I said, it's only two pounds. So if you need, you can also do this without weight. You could just hold a tennis ball or you could hold um, a can of soup or something small. I want to do a starfish holding a weight in one hand. So we're just taking one leg out to the side, leaning your body off center. So you're taking everything off center here and kind of spreading out into a big star. So the goal here is to hold it for about 30 seconds. Do this next to a counter or somewhere stable, a chair, a kitchen chair, if you need to, so that you're not in danger of falling. But as you're holding this, and especially with the weight out here, we're gonna be engaging here, again, in your obliques. If that's too much, bring that weight in and you can actually feel it relax a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to switch sides. Start up nice and tall. Make sure you're looking across the room. And hold. So we're working from your toes, up through your ankle, up through your calves, all the way up your leg, your hip stabilizers, your hip over here is working to hold this leg out. Your obliques are working to hold yourself in this position, especially with a little added weight on the end over here. Take some nice deep breaths. See if you can keep looking forward. Lots of people try to do this when they're doing balance, which is understandable. You wanna see where you are in space. Try to do this maybe in front of your bathroom mirror so you can watch and make sure you're staying in one plane of motion here. All right, take some nice deep breaths. If you're struggling to get to hold your balance here, that's okay. Just work on it, work on one side for 30 seconds. Um, if it's easy for you, work on it for a minute. Um, but try that weight out in this hand to give you a little extra core involvement. Okay, let me know if you have any questions. Um, have a great week. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my videos. Leave any comments and you can private message me as well. Thanks everybody.